Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Hey, Tony, there's something that every solo entrepreneur needs to hear. If you're running your own show, you know how important branding and client management are. And speaking of making things easier for solopreneurs, let's talk about Schedulicity. It's designed to personalize your client interactions from start to finish. Schedulicity has some cool new features coming. You'll soon be able to customize your booking page, add your own logos, choose your colors, and really make it sing to your brand's personality. It's like giving your business a digital front door that looks and feels like you. Schedulicity isn't just about looking good. Schedulicity is designed to make everything smoother from booking to billing. You know, it's not just about the looks, it's about efficiency too. They've integrated something pretty slick, intake forms. Now clients can fill out all the details before they even step foot into the door. What's cool is these forms attach to the client's profile and update automatically for future appointments. Talk about saving time and starting on schedule. It's your schedule and your success all rolled into one. With all these tools from Schedulicity, you're not just running your business, you're growing it. And for all the solopreneurs and sweet owners out there, this is exactly the kind of support we need to stand out in a crowded market. Hey, welcome to your day off. My name is Corey. Of course, I'm sitting with my best friend, Tony. What's up, buddy? What's going on, brother? Uh, we're so excited, man. I love doing live podcasts. It's literally my favorite thing to do is when we can um, sit there at a round table w- w- with a couple people. Um, we are live at uh, ABS Chicago. So thank you, ABS Chicago, for bringing us in. Also, thank you very, very much for Schedulicity for bringing us in. They are sponsoring this weekend, and we could not be happier. Yeah, Schedulicity, um, thank you so much. And, uh, you know, uh, how we feel about Schedulicity, we talk about them all the time. They, uh, they truly are the, uh, the, for us, the, um, the, just the scheduling app that makes everything so easy. Yeah, it's like, um, you know, like Amazon made shopping frictionless. Uh, Schedulicity kind of makes like uh, running your schedule or running your business frictionless. Frictionlessly, you know, whether it comes to like... Say that uh, three times. I can't, can't even say it once. How am I going to say it three <laughs> times? But they just make it, uh, they just make uh, running your business fr- uh, frictionless, you know, from from payment to scheduling to email campaigns. It's just it's just, it's just an all-encompassing um, um, you know, uh, business app, really. It's more than a scheduling app. Yeah, and, and if you do accidentally run into a, or, you know, a rare occasion hitting a friction, you, uh, you reach out to the rock star and it would be solved like that. I mean, there's not a better uh, customer customer service team out there. And yeah, not just in scheduling out. There's not a better scheduling. There's not a better customer service team like in the country. You ever call Comcast? That ain't Schedulicity. No. <laughs> you know, like no. you actually get it through to someone and, and they want to help and they help with a smile on their face. Yeah. I mean, we can't say enough. We love Schedulicity. Thank you so much. And uh, let's, let's give a shout out to ABS and Frank Foco and Kate Gallagher, all those guys that really make it possible for us to come in here and do do what we do. Yeah, I mean, do yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah just a big big shout out to them. We uh, we appreciate them uh, making space for us so we can you know talk to friends and you know every every time that we uh, do a live event, um, our goal is a to uh, dig deeper with older friends and then to uh, to, to to find a couple new friends. And today we we. we we caught a new friend, and I can't wait to get into conversation. Um, uh, today, our guest is Pat Reagan, also known as Patty Cuts. Um, his story is deep, and I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that we can get through um, at least like you know 30 percent of it. But um, but uh, I'm, I'm just excited to get in the story. Dude, just cutting it up right before the podcast, you can tell he's, he's just a cool dude, and uh, not only a cool dude, but if you if you ever see his 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 post, his work. Dude, it, it speaks for itself. It's killer. Well, I'm, I'm sure that it's going to speak for itself once we get into because literally in the last three months, he's probably the most famous barber in the world. Yeah, we'll get into that too. So uh, We'll definitely get in the... T- let's, let's bring a new friend in. Uh, 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 y- yes, let's bring him in. <laughs> Patty, Pat, Pat, Pat or Patty? Pat, Patty, whatever you Whatever we got. Yeah, whatever. whatever Patty reminds me of Patty B- uh, Pembrant, right? Yeah, yeah. Patty the Batty. <laughs> Patty the Batty. <laughs> oh, you got your name now. It's Patty the Batty at the table. <laughs> Pat, man, welcome to your day off. Man, thank you guys so much for having me. You know, it's funny because I didn't know much about you guys, so I started asking around, like, uh-huh. you know, when you asked me to come on, like, 
you know, you, you know about Hatter Street, and, and every single person's had such good things to say about you guys, and it's I would, it's an honor to be on the show. It was expensive for them to say that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thanks, man. That, that, mean, that means the world. You know, it's yeah. like in this, and we see it so often, like just in this competitive world, we're just trying to like, how can we like not, not bring the competitiveness there? Yeah. You know, and just like, let's just be people. You know, no, so, for sure. So that 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 that, mean, that means the world. Whoever whoever said that, it means the world too. You know, yeah. um, I, I mean, I, I kind of want to open up with something that I found fascinating, okay. and that's when um, that's when Babelis gave you Sophie and Hawk like your own Clippers. Yes, I thought that was so dope because it was like, it was like you guys, the brand representing the artist, and and we. It's certainly like the. F- Funnel or the filter that, that that we've tried to like. How can we do better for the artist as well yeah. instead of just t- treating them like meat? You know, it's something that I never in a million years I could even like have thought would happen. You know, so you know there was a first uh, round of influencers. It was Rob, Hawk, and Sophie, uh-huh. and we were all just like ecstatic for them. You know, like like wow, look at them with their face on a box, getting sold and and. 50 different countries, you know, and then the second round came and they, they asked uh, me, Los, and Frank, and it was something that I never even imagined could ever happen, you know. Isn't it wild? Is it weird to, like, see your face on a box? Yeah, it's it's something yeah. that, you know, I'd, I'm i just a kid from Philly, and then now it's I have a face on the Clipper box. I remember seeing, you know, this, I think it was, like, 20 years ago, there was some guy had his face on a, I think it was, like, a wall box, and I'm like, look at that's cool, you know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, 20 years later, it's it's me, so it's pretty cool. Now, did you go into one of the stores and just walk by and yeah. saw your face on it? It was yeah. like, click. I used to go in and, like, stand by it and see if anyone would recognize it. <laughs> <laughs> no one did. You know? I would do the same, by the way. <laughs> no, no they reckon yeah. they, they like look at this guy trying yeah. to get some props standing next to his picture. Yeah, hey, so. you look just like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was cool. It was cool. I I did ask like one lady to take a picture of me next to it. She's like, "Oh, that's you." I'm like, yeah. yeah. So it was pretty cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, that, so you mentioned Philly. Are you? Born and raised? Are you yes. from Philly? Yep, from uh, from the city of Philadelphia. Um, born and raised, and I think it's the best city in the world. The sports are terrible. <laughs> 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 yeah, we've had our ups and downs for sure. Yeah, what, happened, what happened to the Eagles this this, this past season? That's I mean, the season uh, before, epic, you're like, yeah. oh my goodness. Yeah, the, it's the epic collapse. You know, we were 11 and one going into game. You know the thirteenth game, and we lost every other game after that. So it was an epic <sighs> failure. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, hopefully you guys bounce back. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and they're definitely the scariest team in the NFL, man. Yeah, you know, it's certainly the most unpredictable. Yeah. One of the most talented. I mean, you guys are. Stacked. Oh yeah, we got Saquon now, so we, you know we have a lot of expectations. Yeah, but you don't have a center. I mean, yeah, what are you gonna do know. there? You know, yeah. uh, you, you might you never know. He might be back. Oh, right. oh, uh oh! Is that breaking news? <laughs> no, not breaking news. <laughs> just, ESPN. Hope, just wishful thinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of that going on. Yeah. So, um, you still live in Philly? No, I live in Fort Lauderdale now. Oh, really? Yep. Yep. I made the move, and that's you know that's kind of when my whole career changed. But um, yeah, I made the move about you know just a little over ten years ago. How'd you get into the industry? So I started cutting my own hair when I was about twelve, like seventh grade. I used to be lining myself up with a big razor. No, really? Yeah, just I just like prison it. style. Oh yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, you know. Had a had a pushback hairline my whole high school career, you know, <laughs> um, but I just enjoyed the fascination of of kind of just working on hair all myself at first. It was it was just um, it was like an art form to me. What you was know, your I know that's cliche, but it, it kind of was. What was your first clipper? My first clipper was an old wall like that you got in like like Walmart. Yep. Yep, it was white and blue. I still remember it. It was real loud. Oh, wait a second. Weren't those the dog clippers? It could have been. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you it what. It could have been. To, to start on yourself, which is a hard, it's hard to do to, to, to give you a nice haircut yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you can perfect that, yeah. no wonder you're so good. <laughs> yeah, I have one of those three-sided mirrors that you open up and you can see, like, each side of your head. You know, uh, like those old yeah, mirrors. Yeah, sure. Yeah has three little compartments in it. You open it up, and you, you can see the side of your head in the back. So uh, um, I, if I didn't have that mirror, I don't think I would I would even be a barber, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Uh, yep. I credit. I kind of credit the mirror. Cause I could, you still have the mirror? Yeah. 
I, like, is that your parents' house or something? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we sold the house, but yeah, I will always remember that mirror. I kind of, you know, credit that as me being a barber because it got me into like, oh, I can cut, see my. I started yeah. cutting my own hair with that. So. that that's funny because, like, in the in, in like you know the cause side of it, you know, we always look to like uh, you know Vidal Sassoon as the inspiration, and your inspiration was a mirror. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if that was my inspiration, but that's what got me. <laughs> that's what got you. That's in. what got me going for sure. So I don't know if, if I don't if that mirror wasn't there, I don't know if I would have got another mirror and started doing it this way. Uh -huh. So I never thought about that till now, actually. So yeah, it's pretty cool. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah. So I don't I don't know how yeah, we have a friend that's been cutting his hair his whole life too, and I don't I, I can't see it. You know, like like when you're like in the mirror and you're trying to I just everything's don't see the, backwards yeah exactly yeah and, yeah and 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 also like it seems like the depth perception is a little bit different, different. and stuff yeah it's, it's different everything's backwards and um it's just it's awkward at first you know yeah. now it's now it's second nature to me i still do it to this day really oh, that's yeah cool. i mean you're your own barber yeah because you know i just i don't I don't want to wait on other people's time i, get so that. I just do it whenever i want it could be 2 a.m nice. go in you know but when you were little you said, 12 did your parents were like come on patty let me let us take you to a barber or or were they like oh cool he's saving us money saving us three dollars i don't know that's a great <laughs> <laughs> um i really don't know i don't remember that um i know like once i got going my parents like and they liked that i was into something you know oh, cool. like yeah I, I mean i always played sports my whole life but this was like the first thing that i was into that i liked that wasn't sports so that's so cool. i think they like that yeah you mentioned that when you went to Florida, that's kind of when your career took off, yeah. which is also bizarre to me, too, because, you know, certainly a few 10 years, 15 years ago, whatever, like you had to go to New York, you had to go to L.A. to kind of be discovered. But you actually went to South Florida, yeah. um, which is like an odd spot to like take off. Yeah. Walk well, us it that. wasn't planned. That wasn't I didn't go down there planned to cut hair. I mean, um, you know, if we want to get into my story now, that wasn't like a planned thing or any that wasn't even planned to cut hair when I went down there. Um, so. I have a story, it's, you know, it has a lot of ups and downs. I've been in dark places in my life. Um, so we can get into it if you let's want. Let's do it, let's go. Yeah, so, you know, I started cutting hair, 12 years old, loved it, cut hair all through high school. Um, I actually went to a prep high school. So, you know, I, I got a scholarship for track and cross country. I was a really good runner, like one of the in like grade school I was one I was one of the best in the country went to nationals oh. every single wow. year I think like since fourth grade I went to I went I was in nationals every year up until you know high school all around the country um all for track and cross country so I went to a prep school and the funny thing is about a prep school is they're just all about college like you know like and I don't think I would have went to the school if I didn't have a scholarship it was mm -hmm. like a nice school in the suburbs um, I, I definitely, it was expensive. So I, without a doubt, you know, we have a, a, you know, my family comes from a place where we probably wouldn't have afforded, you know, that school. Sure. But I, you know, ended up at this school. Um, it was a great school called LaSalle. Um, but it was just all about like college afterwards. And I was just never a good student. Like it was never, I just couldn't, I never felt like it, it's funny, even to this day, like, I don't want to study things that I, I'm not interested in. But if I am interested in something, I go, like, I go hard on it. And we'll get into that about photography and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, but school was just never for me. But anyway, finished up at LaSalle um, and went to college because that's what I was told to do. You right. know, that's what my parents wanted for me. That's what the high school wanted for me. Um, and it just was... It just really wasn't for me. But um, while in college, I just wasn't a good student. Um, had some ups and downs. And, um, you know, I had a it's, – it's, it's a wild because while I was in college, my dad committed suicide. Wow. And it was something – I don't even know how to bring up because it, I, there wasn't anything leading up to it that I could say, like, before that it saw it coming. It I just think, wasn't. I think, though, like, I think what we're learning is that there, there doesn't have to be the signs. Yeah. Right? Like, like, like actually, the lack of signs is, is more desperate than showing signs. Yeah. You know, because showing signs is like, hey, I need help. Yeah. But, but um, do, you, do you ever listen to, like, uh, there's this artist named Dax. He's, like, this, like, hip-hop guy, but he talks a lot about, like, mental health and stuff. And um, 
He's re- it, it, there's a lot of conversation now about like where men fit in society. Yeah. You know, if, I think for so long that um, we were just expected to do our jobs, pay the yeah. bills and, and go to work the next day, yeah. you know, but um, I'm, I'm really proud as a guy, as a man that, that we're having better conversations about yeah. that. And I think with men in particular, I think that um, there aren't those signs. And on some way it's like, again, more desperate than there being the signs. Yeah. Especially, man, did your dad, was your dad born and raised in Philly? Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, that's a, you know, that's a you, a tough, tough mentality. You got to be tough to, yeah. to grow up in Philly. You know yeah. what I mean? You got to have that. You can't show weakness or you can't show, you know, a vulnerability. You can't, you can't show, uh, you know, just a, something soft because people look at it as a weakness or, yeah. you know what I mean? Well, so, men are men's worst enemy. Yeah, you oh, know, yeah. like like sure. my worst enemies, and no offense, Tony, but you know, are your friends and your and your siblings, you know, like we just like we we dog out on each other, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. like I I get I'm I'm glad that we're hopefully that we're kind of like getting through it, but you know, having the conversations, yeah, you know, but being so. a young man, how I mean, that's got to be devastating. Yeah, and that's where this is kind of leading to because that um it it kind of brought me into this super downward spiral like a really dark place i got into drugs and alcohol for two years after that and it wasn't even it got to the point where it wasn't even alcohol anymore it was just painkillers you know and it just i was able to just forget everything when i was you know taking those painkillers it really does work you really do just that's all you're concentrated on and you forget everything else so you know once that happens um you know, I have two. I have two sisters and a mom that are going through the same thing, and I completely let them down. You know, I let myself down. I obviously, let my father down. You know, he wouldn't want to see me going down this this sure. path as well. Um, and that is, it brought me to the point where my, you know, my mom said, "You need to go to Florida and go to rehab, or you need to go on the street." You know, and mm-hmm. luckily, I I took the chance to go to Florida. Um, I guess I had a little connection, and I knew of a, a spot to go that took me in, and that's how I got into Florida. Like then, that's that's how I ended up moving down there. And so you were in the rehab. Was it across from like uh, the? Was it the, like a? Is it like Trump have a place out down there? I have a buddy who uh, was down there a couple of years ago, and it was right outside of like Boca Raton or Flor- uh, yeah. Fort Lauderdale, at a rehab joint. He was there for a year and. Uh, I was able to get his life back together. Yeah. Um, and uh, he, he said if it wasn't for that place, you know what I mean? Because he, he lost, uh, temporarily lost his wife, his kid, I mean, mm-hmm. everything. And he was able to get his life back. And oh, yeah. Now he's he's a much different guy. He's back on track. He got he has his family back. And yeah. So uh, kudos to you for t- having the courage because that's going to, you know, to a completely different city, trying to – uh, I mean, that takes a lot of courage. It's easy to stay where you are because it's familiar, right? Yeah. But to, so did, 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 were you thinking like, you know, I need to change, I need to get myself together or, uh, or, I mean, what was the trigger of accepting that? Just, uh, I, I don't think I could have been on the streets. So I think that was like my <laughs> ultimatum, you know, it was just it was cold out there. Yeah, it was, you know, uh, so I think, um, thanks mom. <laughs> it was almost like, it was almost like a one way ticket. Like I had to go cause I wasn't going to go on the street. Are you, um, and live like that, you know? <clears throat> Absolutely. Are you scared of Philly? No. Is I that why you stayed in? No, I don't mean it in that sense. I just like, like your relationships there and how those relationships. No, I have, I have, you know. I, I have amazing friends in Philly. I, you mm-hmm. know, when when all that was going on, I had people checking on me, but I just wanted to be by my... I, it's not like I hung out with, like, a bad crowd. Right. I actually did the opposite. I isolated and, and just oh, so you, self-harmed, you know, with yeah, through drugs yeah. and alcohol, you know? So, right. um, you know, I have people reaching out, every, you know, every day trying to help me out, and I just didn't... I just... I just didn't. Well, just you can't it, you see know? it. Yeah, I, did, know, I didn't see it. See it at, you know. Yeah. When you get hooked on, you know, particularly drugs, you can, you can't get off. You get you get ill. Like you get sick, and it's just like once you start feeling sick, it's it's too it's very hard to just tough it out for five days right. until it's all out of your system. It's like a, it's it's really hard. My my brother, um, who's a, a heroin addict, he. Um, he said, I, uh, 
I'll never DT again. You know, and what keeps him from not DTing is not using. Yeah. But, you know, he, he, he knows that he can use easily. Yeah. He can't DT easily. Yeah. You know, and like that, that was, he said it was living hell and he did it in jail too. So, yeah. which makes it worse because nobody has empathy for oh, you. Oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> you that's got to be rough. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can't, I can't imagine. But um, anyways, I'm proud of him and blah, 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 all that yeah. stuff. So what, um, so then you said like your career kind of started yeah, after so. that. So, so you get sober, you, you're staying in Florida, like not, not really like the hotbed of celebrity. Well, I guess it is that area. Anyways, but uh, how, how'd that pick up? So, yeah. So I moved to, um. I had like a halfway house in Boca Raton that I moved in and it's funny because like I did work in a barbershop in Philly. I worked at LB's Cuts uh, for my guy Lou. Great. He still has LB's Cuts going to this day. Amazing person. Um, gave me, you know, he taught me a lot about, you know, what I know about cutting hair and all. Mm -hmm. um, but after I moved to Florida, I just, I, don't, I didn't think hair cutting could be like an actual career really. I didn't really pursue it right away. You know, I went to, uh, I started working at, like, weird places. Like, I worked at the rehab, I went back and worked at the rehab, and I started working at a pizza shop. You know, in mine, this is, like, not too long ago. This is, like, 10 years ago, you know? Right. And I was just still miserable, you know? I was, like, you know, I was still cutting people up at the halfway house for, I don't know, 10, 5, 10 bucks, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I was delivering pizza. That was the last job I had before, you know, cutting hair. And um, I remember I was just, I just wasn't happy in life. And I was, I remember I was still, I was like taking a delivery. I was a delivery driver. And then when I wasn't delivering, I was washing the dishes and stuff like that. And I remember like driving and I made like a sharp turn and buffalo sauce got all over my back. <laughs> I was like, man, what the fuck? Like, and I like pulled over the side of the road and someone told me I could go to barber school and just sign up. And I, I never knew, like, how to do that or anything. And I, like, I remember, like, pulling over the side of the road. I don't even think I delivered the wings. I think I just <laughs> took them, you know, I was like, I, fuck this job, you know. And, um, so Patty's a thief, too. Yeah. <laughs> Stealing buffalo wings. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember making this decision, I'm going to go in and sign up for barber school, like, the next day. And I actually did it. And I went in. I went, I went in the... Um, it was called Florida Barber Academy, and I went in and just signed up. And they said you can, you know, you can start next week. And I remember they gave me these cool, like, I thought the outfit was cool when I first got it, like, you know, like the little, uh, like a barber jacket. Yeah, 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 like what nurses wear. You know, yeah. <laughs> and I, I was like, this is sick. And, uh, and yeah, I started going um, to the Florida Barber Academy. So when you were working as a barber in Philly, you weren't licensed. No, no, I was just um, like. A few people told um, my guy Lou about me that I do, you know, good cuts, and he brought me on and stuff. Mm -hmm. But and it wasn't too long. I, I that's I started, you know, that's when I was in it, getting into drugs and alcohol, so it didn't last long. And then I was down in um, in Florida. Gotcha. That's cool. So, so did you? Um, you were in school. And how long? How long's your school? Uh, it's like about, it took me longer, but <laughs> it was about, it was about we covered that earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was about tw uh, eleven months, um, yeah. and it was cool because I got, I started getting opportunities while I was in school. Like we had a competition, um, you know, a lot of people like it. It wasn't long because I, you know, I was, I've been cutting hair since twelve, so it right. wasn't long when all the students were watching me cut. You know, everyone was crowding around me, um, and I remember they had this 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 hair battle, the student hair battle, and I, I won. And I mean, clearly. Well, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and one of the judges owned a barbershop in Florida, and he's like, he's like, you working anywhere yet? I'm like, I'm like, nah. He's like, do you want a job? And I'm like, yeah, for sure. And I, just, and I started working uh, at New Era Barbershop. He's like, come on, you'll fit right in. You know, come, you know, come, come tomorrow. And, you know, I remember pulling up to the, the shop, and I'm like, Oh, this ain't, this don't look too nice of an area, you know? I thought I was going to fit right in. You know, I walk in, I'm the only white guy in there. Um, and that's how I, I kind of started getting into, you know, you know, cutting black guys' hair. You know, I actually, I, I almost just left, like, because I was like, I don't know if I want to uh, stay here, like, right when I pulled up. But I gave it a shot, walked in. For the first couple months, I wasn't cutting anyone. You know, no one wanted to sit in my chair. Um, and then I started getting good at it. I would take classes outside of the shop, know stuff like that like it's sh at shows like this 
Um, and yeah, it's like one of those things. Remember I said earlier, once I wanted to learn something, there's no stopping me in, le- in learning it. That's so, awesome. Uh, and, and, and again, it's another p- s- s- kind of speaks volumes of you, even though you don't like to learn or it might take a little longer to get to, to, through things. Yeah. But your courage, you know, you pulled up, you didn't want to do it. But you did it anyways. Mm-hmm. You stuck through it. You made it happen. You know what I mean? A lot of times, it's it's so easy to stay in your car like, yeah, I'm out of here. You know yeah. what I mean? Go down the street and work somewhere else. Yeah. But, but you know, you gave the guy your word or, or, or you know, you just the courage to go through something that's kind of challenging. Yeah, for sure. For sure. There was actually a shooting there the day before. So. <laughs> what? Yeah. At the barber shop? Yeah. Well, oh. right next, it's connected to a little bodega store, and I was just, yeah, like there was still a bullet in the glass when I pulled up. You know? Oh, no. <laughs> well, you know, I, I mean, wouldn't change. It was an amazing experience. Uh, like, you t- like, Tony oh. said, you're like, oh, home, Philly, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is great. <laughs> oh, this is great. Yeah. I feel right at home. <laughs> Tony said the courage to walk in, but there was also courage like a month later when you're not really seeing anyone. Or, yeah, no, and for I'm, sure. And I'm sure people are like, I ain't sitting in that chair. And then, you yeah. know, what does that do to your ego? What does that do yeah, to your confidence? I mean, yeah, I mean, you know? especially when you're only getting one or two, three people a day for... 12 bucks a haircut. You know? And how you so, going to learn, too? I mean, yeah. you know. The, the, well, luckily, the, yeah, there was good barbers in there that I learned. I was able to, like, I, I didn't just sit in a chair and, like, do nothing. I was watching them. And, mm-hmm. and they were they were helpful. They were teaching me, um, which a lot of, you know, a lot of barbers don't really do. They don't, they don't need to teach the person that just is new coming in, you know. So, sure. um, luckily, you know, I remember uh, Chico, Jay, and Twan, they were just an angel, the owner. You know, they, they helped me out a lot, teaching me stuff that I didn't know. You still uh, have relationships with them today? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't talk to all of them, um, you know, everyone, but but I'm still friendly for sure, you know, yeah, so. That's awesome. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, pretty cool. How'd you find your way into, like, uh, I mean, again, like Tony said earlier, if you scroll your page, like, you've done a lot of, like, sports people. You've done yeah. a lot. Of, I mean, and by the way, what does a celebrity barber mean? Does that mean you're the celebrity? Does that mean know, that you man. do celebrity? <laughs> <laughs> I hate that word anyway. I do too. I'm with you. Yes. But, Only because uh, I don't know how to define it. So before that even happened, um, that's when uh, Instagram started getting, you know, picking up. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was like, I remember I I used to scroll on Instagram and I seen this one dude that used to, his name's Mike Custom Cuts, and he used to take his haircuts with a camera. And not many other people did that. And I was, remember, I was like, I want my pictures to look like his, you know. And this is like, luckily, you know... This is when Instagram started getting big, but still, there was a lot of big barbers, and no one knew who I was. So I was like, how do I get my name out there? Like, how do I do stuff like this guy? And I remember going to a few shows and just being in the crowd and, like, seeing people on stage. I'm like, how do, how do I do that, you know? And I was always inspired by it, but that's when, um, that's when I got a camera, and that kind of changed everything for me, you know, getting a camera and, and starting taking pictures of my work. Um, and I went, you know, full dive into learning photography from the, from that point on. Full dive usually costs you about ten grand when it comes to photography. Oh yeah, yep. <laughs> I remember emptying. I, I remember selling stuff just to get the camera. Like wow. I remember, I remember just being broke, just like even that, like Damn. that was your new pill. Yeah, I remember. Like I remember just just putting everything I had into getting this new camera that did it change how you cut when you start taking yeah. photography and, and yep. looking at it? it I remember like I would start uh and this is kind of how I got on with babyless once I started putting out this amazing work um I started getting recognition you know and it definitely changed the way I cut because the camera doesn't show many you know it shows all the flaws right. you know so I remember like I would like specifically time set my schedule so the last person that came in i knew i was going to do like a two hour cut on him and mm-hmm. you know not two hour cut but two hour yeah. session of cutting enhancing taking pictures and then i knew i was going to post that on instagram so i would like i would have like a strategic mind of that day who i was going to post you know so, so it was it definitely changed the way i cut for sure and they loved it, right? Your clients? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would tag them in it, it yeah. you know. And like I started I had a few thousand followers at that point, you know, they were they were loving getting, you know, some recognition. So it was cool, you know. Yeah, that's great cuz I can see how it would just you know, you, you do a normal typical cut and, and it looks great, you know. 
but when you start using that camera, you know yeah. what I mean. You're you're che- you're double checking yourself, and um, but when you but when you started to 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 get the recognition, was it hard to to? I mean, it's got it's got to be like a like a a new drug, right? Because yeah. you're like, oh my god, you know. But was it hard to to kind of keep yourself focused on the craft? Versus like the the, the, the chase. No, yeah, not for me. Um, but it did feel good getting like it, it. I did feel good getting recognition. Like oh, like and I felt it too. Like I felt my. I saw myself moving up like slowly because I remember being in the in those shows and not one person knew who I was, you know. And and now I'm friends with these guys that I I still remember were on stage that that day. So it's it was pretty cool. Like I I do re- I do remember. The, you know, climbing up the ladder for sure. Did but you? It didn't really. It didn't affect uh, my work much. No, I was always like folk. To this day, I'm just always focused on putting out the best work possible, no matter what. That's awesome. Who 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 gave you your first break? Would it like break? Break like, as far as like no, being a, yeah being an educator in front of a crowd. Okay, so there was this way back. Like it's funny because, um, this group. And I remember, like, trying to get in with this group called The Commission. It was just a bunch of barbers that called. They, would, they just made themselves, like, a little group. And they would like, go around, travel a little bit, cut some hair. Um, but it was called The Commission. This around Florida, bunch, or they were traveling national. like, East Coast barbers. It wasn't yeah. traveling them. It was just a group that was cool to be known to be a part of. Right. It's like, 12 people, like, uh, Mike Custom Cuts, Al Uppercut, a few guys from Del- – I can't uh, – there was, there was a bunch of us, but – when they gave me that opportunity, it was really cool to be a part of. I felt like that was my first break. Like, bam, I'm doing something right, you know? Right. Uh, that's got to be cool, especially for a young barber. Like, yeah. you know, to be invited. And especially, that's like, that was your goal. And then all of a sudden, you got the opportunity to, to uh, get that goal. What happened after that? So, um, that's when, luckily, like, um, I used to go to, st- I would just pay to go to shows out of my own pocket. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't care. At all, I would I would go all around, go to shows, and I started um, meeting people. You know, I've met Jay Majors, knew who he was. Um, he knew who I was through the, through the work that I was putting out. I didn't through really the commission, show myself. Dog. I didn't show myself much. <laughs> right. You know, I never, still don't really. But a lot of people knew me from my logo and the work that I put out. And um, luckily, that's when Babyless, my second like break, break was was when I got the call from Jay because he was putting the team together. You know, this is eight years ago putting mm-hmm. when Babyless first started, and he, he called me. He's like, do you want to be a part of this team? I was like, hell yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't – I had a lot of other um, offers before that, but nothing – one thing about me is I never, like, wanted to represent anyone unless I was all in on it, you know. And they told me that, you know, because at the time, Babyless had shit clippers. It was yeah. bad, you know. But they told me the vision, like – you know, the vision that they were going to go in. You know, Conair, you know, is one of the most popular companies in the whole world. They have money to spend. And yeah. they told us, like, listen, we're going to put everything we have into this into this new men's, you know, haircutting line, you know, and which is babyless now. And um, obviously they did what they said they were going to do. It's amazing. It's yep. amazing. What, what's really cool about this weekend is um, that Babyliss is putting uh, Kaz and, and Barbers up on the stage together yeah. and kind of, like, melting that. And, and yep. the team is so, like, I mean, it, as far as, like, if it's a cattle call, like, you guys have the best artist in, in, in the country on yeah. one team, which is, yeah. you know, whether it's Kaz or whether whether it's Barbering, like, yeah. everybody's, like, top-notch. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's, it's like, every time I leave stuff like this, I'm just super inspired. It's just, I, I feel like I need to go do more, you know? It's like being around... And it being around, like, humble people, you know, we've had some people come in and they just didn't really work, you know, but th- this core group of people that we've had for a while, it's just super humble and it's just easy to work with. And you feel inspired when you leave, so it's it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's like iron sharpened iron because yep. all you guys are, 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 are sharp, yep. you know. All right. Who was your first, like, semi reckonable face – recognizable face yeah. uh sat in your chair and then when they sat in your chair how did it make you feel how did you feel because i know some, you know like 
you know, if I would probably act, felt like a little kid again, like a little giddy. I don't, I don't yeah. know. But who was the who was the first? It was your breakthrough. Guy? Yeah. So my first um, ever like celebrity client, his name's Danny Garcia. He's a uh, he's a pro boxer, and at the time he was running through people. I, the good thing is he's from Philly, and we actually know some of the same people. You know, oh, wow. we're almost the same age, and um, I'm a big boxing fan. So I remember. Um, just always like no, I know his barber and all, and he was in Florida one day, and he he just hey, can you cut up Danny? I'm like oh yeah, like this is I was so excited. I went gave him a good haircut. He let me take a picture and all. Um, probably took like a couple hours on the cut, but he you know he loved it. And we, he, you know, I'm still friends with Danny to this day. You know, he's a he's he's a really good person. Uh, he's still boxing. But that was, like, my first, like, time cutting up someone, like, super famous. You know, it felt really, really, it felt like I did, I accomplished something, you know. Right. Oh, it I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. it was cool. Especially because I'm a big boxing fan. You know, I was a fan of Danny way before he knew who I was. So, it was, yeah, it was cool. That's cool. Did that transition into, like, other um, other celebrities that you'd cut? Yeah, or so, that's a, that's a great question. It kind of transitioned into me kind of, like, going for these guys now like i got a little taste of it and i'm like i can cut more so i started sending dms to people you, know? you, you just keep going from addiction to addiction i yeah, see it man you know, it's all good yeah, man you're yeah. like i need the celebrities yeah, now bro yeah. and i was like i started i started uh you know i know a few people that train at this one um this one little you know sports complex that the guys train at in the nfl in the off season you know they a lot of the nfl players move to florida live here in the off season, train, and then when the season starts again, they go back to their where you know they're playing at the city that they're playing for. And I remember I would fo- I followed this page of of uh, the training complex, and I would look and see who trained there, and then <laughs> I would send them DMs like, "Hey, if you ever need a haircut," because obviously you know they they probably don't have a full time barber if they're living in a bunch of different areas. Sure. Right. And I remember sending DMs to uh, these guys, not ever thinking I would get a reply because I've done it before and never got a reply. Um, and I will share a little trick about that in a second of how to do that. But I remember um, the first D- the first DM that I got back, um, this guy named Darrell Rivas, he actually just got into the Hall of Fame. He was the first one to answer me, you know, and he, I was, I was like, uh, I think I said like, like, hey, if you ever need a haircut, um, you know, just let me know. I didn't even know how to message people at that point. Sure. But he answered, and he's like, yeah, do you do house calls? And I went down, cut his hair. He actually he, I, he actually said, uh, he's like, yeah, do you do house calls? And I was like, yeah, for sure. He's like, okay, cool. I'll, I'll message you soon. And I didn't hear back from him for, like, probably four days. And I was like, damn, man. Was like, <laughs> Missed opportunity. Yeah, too good to be true. And then I remember the day I was thinking that, he messaged me. He's like, hey, can you come and do the cut today? Went down, cut his hair. Uh, he loved it. You know, again, let me take a picture. It was amazing because I'm, I'm just as big of a football fan as I am boxing. So that was really cool. And then the next day, I started getting messages from guys he trained with. Um, and one of them's Mark Ingram. He's like, hey, I seen you cut Revis yesterday. You think you can come by and give me a cut? And this was the next day. And I was like... Hell yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm. Patty's parked right outside the, yeah. the just waiting on the DM. Yeah, I'll be there in two yeah. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and that started it, man. I'm, I'm great friends with Mark Ingram till this day. And this was six or seven years ago, you know, and it just, he started bringing me out to, you know, New Orleans every, every in the year in the off season um travis started you know he messaged me too during the off season in miami uh that was about six years ago so it all just kind of it just kind of happened from one person you know all right we're gonna get on to travis but we're gonna put that on a pause for a sec because i have lots of questions about that and just about what that whole that what that whole situation was um so really want to give uh darrell uh, th- thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you I, know? I let him know for sure. You, yeah. you owe him like a car or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I mean, he drives an R8, so I don't know if I could. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Might be a few years before I get him that. <laughs> hey, you mentioned about the, um, you mentioned about getting in the DMs. Like, yeah, like yeah. What, what, what's your technique? So, obviously, these guys aren't following you that you're messaging. So, when you, you know, when you look on your thing... 
and you go, they're not in your first page of messages. So you go over to requests and that's when you can see, you know, the message requests mm -hmm. from people, you know, and you want to make sure that whatever you say, you get a point, you, you get the point across in that first line because they're not going to click on it unless it's, inter unless it's interesting for them to click on. So I would, I would start saying like in that first line, like best barber in Miami and I know this works because they told me it worked because they were like, oh, I clicked on your stuff because I wanted to see if you were the best barber in Miami. What I was used to be doing wrong is in that first line, I would be like, hey, what's up, man? I'm a big fan. You know how many messages they get like that every oh, day? Yeah. You know, so you really want to, after I would say best barber in Miami, I would then I would say, hey, what's up, man? I'm a big <laughs> fan. <laughs> but you really, you know, not that I do think I'm the best in Miami, but I, it's just get them it's just to the click. Catch. Yeah. yeah, and then... Once they click on my page, now they're like, oh, like, look at this work, you know? Right. And that's because of the years I've been trying to build my portfolio of all those countless nights and hours learning. So it's just ended up working out, you know? Who was your first UFC fighter? First UFC, probably, I think it was Usman, yeah. And then he put me on all types of people. I mean, that's one of my best friends till this day, you know. Yeah, because you walked down the aisle with him once, didn't you? Oh, or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I go to all his fights with him, like, for the whole week, fight week. So wherever the fight is, um, we fly out together. Because I do all his filming and stuff, too. Like I said, I learned photography and videography. I actually know what I'm doing. So um, I'm not just his barber. I do all his photos and videos and oh, stuff, wow. too. So for fight weeks and stuff like that, I do both, like I do all of his content and the haircuts for the team, so it's pretty cool. You look That's like you were playing cool. Uno with them. And yeah, on that, that was a, <laughs> on a private jet, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm blown away by that you have any time to do anything. Yeah, you know, I, mean, it's, you know, I just, do got time though, but yeah, but I do like, I do like when I do have time, I'm I try and like make the best of it and learn some stuff, you know, uh -huh. and and you know whatever I'm doing. Um, I got into golf for a while. That took a lot of my time, you know. Obviously. It takes a lot of time yeah, for everyone, yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But um, oh, what was I gonna say? Uh, I forget what I was just about to say. But yeah, you just I, I just I mean, we always see you like you know flying to someone or yeah. doing something, and that yeah. just you know it just takes it just kind of takes time. With yeah, that. it's it's getting tiring doing that, but you know, it's just like even when you only travel once a week. It feels like you can't get into a rhythm at home, you know, just knowing you have to leave in like five days. Yeah. It's just like, it's just hard to get into a rhythm unless you're really like dedicated, you know, like eating, I'm talking eating good, sleeping good, stuff like that, you know. So. I haven't figured out the sleeping good part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never in a row. It's yeah. like, I, I can't ever leave the East Coast, like as far as like my, you know, if, if we're in LA, I'm up at like four in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, oh. It's, but uh, um, I remember what I was going to say now, a cool story about Usman. We followed each other, you know, on Instagram for a while because he's friends with Mark Ingram, so we would always see me. Mark would post me up, you know, show love. Um, shout out to Mark. He's one of the best hype guys ever. Like, he's he's really put me on to a lot of people. That's awesome. Um, but it's funny because right before Usman became the champ, he messaged me, and I, didn't, I hadn't cut his hair before. We just followed each other. And I was in L.A. when he messaged me, um, and he's like, hey, can you come – can you come cut me before I go out for this fight? And um, I was there for uh, Michael Thomas for the Saints. We were, I remember we were shooting, I remember exactly where I was. We were shooting on the Family Feud set. And I was supposed to come home the next day. On a, That was a Saturday, and I was supposed to come home on a Sunday. I wouldn't have got home until at night. And Usman messaged me, and I remember he was like, can you cut me up? And I had nothing left to do. So I remember I was like, yeah, yeah, for sure. I didn't tell him, like, I was in L.A. Or, I just bought you know, I, I think I spent like 400 extra on a plane ticket to come home, um, took the red eye home. I was able to cut his hair right before he left for that fight. And if I did not do that, I don't know if we would be like wow. friends to this day. So I remember I spent money to cut his hair, but it, it ended up working out. So I always tell that story because it's, 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 you just want to hop on opportunities that present itself, you know? Cause you know how like you see guys, some, some guys that, uh, portray something in front of the camera and they're different he just seems like a straight up class act oh he's the man yeah yeah he's he's, just, he's one of my like friends that i just talk with like not about any just just about life you know not about like what i can do for him or what he can do for me it's just 
That's it's awesome, really man. cool when, and you know, we've had this happen a couple of times, like when you have a, a transactional relationship, you know, a haircut and, and, you know, give me, give me some dollars. But then like when, when that changes into like, oh, asking about family or yeah. like it becomes a real, like a, a real friendship. And that, yeah. that's really cool when, when you get past like that, that transactional you know, relationship. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. I, you know, I, I just, I, I want to take a second to just say that, you know, a lot of your success or a lot of certainly what we know, know of you now happened after addiction and happened yeah. after like real hard struggle. So, you know, I mean, I, I have to say it and then we can move on. But like, I mean, if you're listening in and, and you're in it, like there is life after in it. Oh yeah. You know, and there, there can be a lot, a lot of life after you know, when you're in it and, you know, I just, I wanted to take a sec just to point that out because I, I, I think that that's, that's the win here. Yeah. You know, oh, for a hundred percent. I mean, I could have gave up, you know, I, I thought about giving up every single day when I was in addiction. Sure. You know, that was the first thing I thought about when I woke up every day is just, man, I, I just, kind of like, I could just go out right now, you know, and just end every, all the pain. And it gets better if you just give it a, sh- you know, it's, if you give it a shot, I've seen it thousands and thousands of people that I know that have gotten better and they sure. are living a better life now. All right, man. So you're the most famous barber in the world <laughs> right now, bro. <laughs> How in the world? Well, first off, it was like, was it the, was it, was the New York Times and New York Post that did a story yeah, on you? Yeah, whatever. Like, how'd that come up, though? So the New York Times, they didn't mention me at all, but they did a story that, you know, Travis is making... Travis the, Kelsey? Yeah. Tra- Kansas City Chiefs? Travis Kelsey... Super Bowl is making chant. the, the <laughs> fade popular. But, you know, it's right. basically that's what they said. It's Travis Travis is making the fade popular. And that just turned into like but I don't think the crazy thing is I don't think the New York Times said that, but someone started it started getting into you know how stuff gets lost in the media. It got to that point where it was just like they're saying like New York Times said Travis made the fade popular, you know, and then it just went crazy after that, you know. Started just, getting hate. Yeah, I got a lot of love and a lot of hate, um, which is crazy. You know, I would get, uh, I remember the New York posted an article on me, Good Morning America, USA Today. Um, you know, they all were calling me to, to get my insight on it, and I was, the first thing I would say is, Look, we didn't we didn't make it fade popular. That's been a popular for a hundred years. That's been a look for a hundred years, and that's what I that's what I would say on it. And um, but people took it like people. I started seeing articles of stuff I didn't even say about me. It was pretty crazy. The good and the bad. It was wild. Like how, how do you how do you was. navigate that? Like how do you navigate? I mean, it's easy to navigate the good. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, I'm the man. That's right. Yeah. You know, but like, how do you navigate, how do you navigate, you know, the, the, either misrepresentation or, or some yeah. of the negative. So it started getting to me because, um, I started seeing all this stuff. Like people started commenting that I was like racist and stuff. Cause I didn't give credit to, you know, the black community. And I didn't really even think at the time it was that it was that deep at all. Like I didn't, I didn't realize when I was saying like, oh, the, you know, the fade's been popular for years. I didn't realize like I, like anything. I was just like, we didn't, we didn't make that pop- popular. And I didn't like realize I should take it deeper than that. And once, you know, the media, like everyone, it started becoming a race thing. I'm like, damn, maybe I should have said more, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, about the history of the fade. Because of course the African-American culture made the fade popular, you know, years, you know, for years, you know, and like, Taking it from skin to dark yeah. with a seamless blend, like you know, black people made that. Sure, that, you know, rappers made that popular and stuff like that. Um, so I didn't think it didn't even go through my head that it, it was like that deep. And now I realize, it, you know, it is that deep. At, at you know, it's you know, like I don't want to disrespect anyone, so I should have went more into the history of the fade when these all these big newspapers were. But also, I didn't say anything wrong either. Right. So I was just like, didn't say anything. Yeah, so right, it was yeah. hard. It, it took a little bit of a toll on me. People like, and you know, there was thousands well, of messages on my, you know, from anybody that you 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 were you were cutting. Did anybody like? No, I had all support. People that know me, like know me as a person, I had nothing but a hundred percent support, which was sure. cool. It was all just people I had, you know, troll accounts and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. 
Well, just, you know. They're all Russian hackers. You yeah, hacks, you know, yeah. it's, all, it's all good. <laughs> You're all good. Dude, what was that like, though? What was it like? like? It was cool, man. It was pretty wild. Like, I, like did, it was did, cool. Did it, Travis help you navigate through some of the, quote-unquote, fame or no, notoriety, I guess? I mean... I remember like when I do, I remember when it first dropped and I didn't realize how big it was going to get. I'm like, look, bro, look at it. Like, look, look at the hair. <laughs> look what the haircut's doing, you know? Yeah. Um, but you've been doing Travis's hair for six or seven been years, doing, right? The funny thing is we've been doing the same exact fade, the same exact way for six years. And why is it only getting popular now? It's, you know, obviously because Taylor's, you know, uh-huh. Taylor, Taylor Swift, who's an amazing person. Um, but... That's like, it, we've been doing the same haircut for years, and it's just coming out now that, you know, it's popular. So it's pretty funny that, and but ironic about what, that. What, what is it like? I don't want to put you in NDA or anything, but, but what's it like, like, walking into that machine, Taylor's machine? Um, it's, 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 it's like, kind of cool to see because I know her as a person, and she's just a really nice person. Like, mm-hmm. it's just, um, she's very interested in what you're saying. She doesn't, like, act like the most famous celebrity in the world, you know. She's a very nice person, um, and she's a good girlfriend to my friends, so it's pretty cool. Like, it's not, it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't seem too crazy to me. I, however, things have changed, you know. We had to change houses, um, so things have changed for me. Now I have to drive further, and there's more security. Um, usually, you know, like, Travis is one of my bros, so it's easy. Like, I used to just go sleep at his house every weekend, um, so things kind of all like changed a little bit now, um, but uh, it's it's cool to see. Like I'm happy for him and seeing like the stardom that he's getting because mm-hmm. he's just a normal guy too. Like right. you guys would love him. He's just a regular dude. Man. He's like the. I'm. You know, I am such a big fan of the Heights. Yeah. You know, like like I I just. I admire their relationship. Yeah. You know, their, their brother relationship. I, I love, love, love the podcast. Yep. I love how they, they cut it up. I love how it's just, it's just, it's just very, very entertaining. And, and, yeah. and I, I like, I, it's impossible for me to watch a podcast and not like, like give shout outs to their parents because they seem yeah. about as grounded and as real as yeah. you possibly can be. Yeah. They're you know? just, I, I know the parents really well. They're great people, you know, just, just nice people. That's it. That's the best way I can put it. They're just really nice. Like, Low key people. Low key people. That, that's know, right. yeah. it, it shows, you know. It, it shows. Yeah. It's just like the family yeah. first seems like to be yeah. the thing. So, uh, when's the wedding? <laughs> Hopefully soon. That was fun. <laughs> hey, if you need a plus what? one, I'm yeah. your dude, bro. Okay, cool. How many plus <laughs> one requests have you gotten? Um, we'll see when they announce <laughs> the wedding. <laughs> when, uh, when? Oh, he when, did when say they, when, not if. <laughs> do you bust, do you bust his balls when they play the Eagles? Um, I used to back in the day. Now, it's, you know, they, they don't care too much about all. They just, you know, it's a job for them at the end of the day, even though they love playing football too much. So I'll like, I'll bust balls a little bit, but not, you know. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, last year was tough though, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When they played the Eagles in the Super Bowl, you know, that was, and Travis. I hope you cut his hair in a, in a, jer- in a uh, Eagles jersey. Yeah, I wore a jersey to the game. I wore a Jason jersey to the game. Oh, so cool. I, I wore yeah. Eagles, but I wore his brother, so it was all good. <laughs> I, I love the pick where uh, where Taylor was leaning against the glass, like celebrating. And you're sitting like two people, two yeah, two two people away from her. Yep. You know, you guys are clapping. Yeah, and, uh, that was awesome. It's day. been cool going to games like with her, and you know, we get a, like a whole separate box now. We're like right in the middle of the field. It's pretty cool. That's, That's awesome. cool. She's you, real into the game. She's a football fan now, which is really cool. That's pretty you know? cool. Yeah. Do you ever like pinch yourself and like, how in the hell am I in this? Oh yeah, box? all the time. Yep, yeah, all the time. Just, just like how am I in the situation I'm in today? I, I still remember. I can take myself back ten years ago to where I was, you know. So it's it's cool to like ever make you emotional. A little bit. Yeah. 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 yeah a little bit. Yep. We, I, sure. I certainly get that. I mean, it certainly isn't at that level, but just like how we've how how we've navigated the podcast and through the yeah. industry and like you know the people who same you know you'd see on stage and stuff and like yeah, yeah it's impossible. So now we were talking about this this morning, like a couple of years ago, like my imposter syndrome was, was taking over a little bit, you know, now it's like, I, I still feel that imposter syndrome, but, but I have space to just kind of let it go as well, you know, but it, it's just, it's a weird transition to kind of like, you know, you know. It also shows the work, the amount of work you put in though. Cause like, obviously we didn't get to where we are without all this work. You don't just get noticed. Like it just doesn't happen. You have to like put a lot of work in. 
mm -hmm. and do things right and and I think part of the key too, at least for most of us, is like not wanting, not getting noticed being the goal, yeah. right? You get noticed when that doesn't become the goal. Yeah. You know, when it's just, when it's just the work that is the getting yep. noticed, and not yep. not how you're being, you know, how, how, the work that you're putting into being known. I don't know if that makes sense, but it makes no, sense it in makes my head. Perfect sense to me, absolutely. I mean, I see why they like you because I mean, you're such a just a real guy, nice guy. There's nothing like arrogant or, or coming across like I'm the man. You're just. I mean, you, you put it in the work, you put it in the effort, it, the result shows itself. Earlier, we talked about, uh, you said you let your mom, you, you felt like you let your mom and your, your sisters down yeah. when you're going through. How are they feeling right now? Uh, they're very proud. You know, yeah. it's pretty cool. Yeah, they're, they're proud to see, you know, like what I've turned my life into, you know, because I wasn't, I should have been like the father figure when all that went down, you know. Um, because, you know, I have two younger sisters. Like, they needed someone to step up, and I just couldn't. You know, I, I just I went the opposite way. And, you know, my mom, she needed someone, and I, I wasn't there, you know. So it's I still think about it this day, and it hurts. But, you know, it's I know they, t they you know, they tell me that they're proud, and, you know, so it's pretty cool. Do you think that's a driving force, like the the, uh, the disappointment that, that you feel like you've left them? Do you think it's like – I? Maybe I need to be uh, successful for them or I need be. to be, yeah. I need Maybe. to stand up for yeah. them. Yeah, um, definitely like deep down for sure. Yep. I would say it is. Yeah. Yeah. They, like, they should be proud. Yeah. yeah. You know, they, they should, should be proud. Dude, I'm so like, I we were, I think I told you like yesterday when we were on the floor, like it's so cool to me to see, well, one, I'm going to tell you that like, even though like this is kind of the first time we've met, we've, we've shook hands a couple of times yeah, at shows yeah, and remember, stuff like that. Yeah. But like, I remember like even seeing you, um, you know, during the whole Super Bowl stuff and like, I, I had a little ownership in that, you know, like, like, oh man, I know that dude, <laughs> yeah. right? I know that dude. That, that, that's really cool. Um, and I feel the same way about Vic. You know, we had, we've had Vic on the podcast and like, um, when we were flying here, I hit the NFL network and like Vic's in a clothing company for NFL network. And I think it's like one they're all babelists. But two, like, it's just so cool to kind of see, like, that barbers are being, you know, elevated. I mean, I'm sure there's a thousand other barbers that are being elevated that I just, yeah. I, I don't know. So, you know, it just, it, it, I miss it. But, like, it's just really, really cool that, I don't know if it's respect, but that, that, that you know, just barbers and, and people in the industry are being elevated into, like, the real world, right? Like, here it's, like, all this is like fake, you know, like we all no, know no. each other, you yeah. know, we all know each other and, and, and there's certain celebrities, there's certain people on the stage, but you know, for the outside world to kind of, to, to kind of be introduced to that is pretty, pretty for dope. Sure. You know, yeah, I'm proud of Vic, man. He's doing his, I remember he was used to be in my DMS when no one knew who he was, you know, mm -hmm. asking for advice and look, now look where he took it. It's pretty cool. Same. I, I think that, um, I was at a barber shop once and they were giving Vic hell, you know, yeah. just about like how he's presenting himself and like, my position is and always will be like stay out of somebody else's game. Yeah, you know, we're, in this world, on the rawest level, we're all just trying to make it. And however we find that path, or however we um or we, we find our path, you know, you should that should be applauded. You shouldn't be yeah. like shitting on somebody, you know, because your your path is sitting in a barbershop busting someone's balls who you yeah. don't even know, you know. So I stood up for him a little bit. I was like, dude, this guy's on his path, man. Yeah. Why do you care how he does it? You know. Yeah. And we're all there. We all need that validation or some kind of validation in He's life. He's doing man. something right. He's doing right. It, man. <laughs> He's doing something right. Yeah. And then I just saw him with Brady. I mean, you talk about like another step up, man. Yeah. yeah just the interview well, with Tom. If you don't Brady. have people talking bad about you, you're not really doing something. You know, it's you're true. Not, you're, you know. So well, see, now really you just offended me because you, when you opened this podcast, you said everybody says you guys are good guys. <laughs> 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 we yeah, ain't doing I need shit, people, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah, nah, they them dudes are assholes. <laughs> That'll be your role now. Yeah. yeah those guys. <laughs> I'll be that guy. Yeah, <laughs> those guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, Patty. How can people find you? Um, you can find me on. Inst I do most of my stuff on Instagram, Patty underscore Cuts. Um, that's where I'm, I'm going to start YouTube soon. But that's Instagram's where most of my stuff goes to. So Patty underscore Cuts. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, follow him because you will be. Uh, you will fall in love just like the rest of us. Yeah. Thank you guys, yeah. dude. Yeah. This is really cool. Yeah, Thank man. Thanks that for hanging quick. out. That hour went fast. Dude, we're on it. Yeah, and we're right yeah. on an hour, man. Yeah, it just, that's great. It, it flew by. Yeah. Th thanks for making time for us. I know yeah, these, man. Thanks these are, for having uh, me. We can absolutely. Anytime. Anytime you want to jump back on and talk about the wedding. Well, I can talk about it because you're taking me with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> oh, wait a sec. Do you have a girlfriend? I do. Yep. Oh. She, she lives in England. Does she? Yeah. 
She's bet- a barber in England. We're one of the best in England, so it's pretty. We've been dating. Oh, give her a shout out, dude. What's uh, her? Katie Fades on Instagram. Katie Fades. Yep. I bet she's looking forward to the wedding. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, I'm taking your place. <laughs> Patty, thanks for hanging out with us, and thank you for making time for yeah, us. Thank you guys so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very, very much for joining us on your day off. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating and drop a review to listen to all the latest podcasts. Please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet and to stay connected on and off the show. You can follow us at hair on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again. And we'll see you next time. Peace and love.